Is that a Harley Davidson? Is that a BMW? What the freaking heck? <laughs> so what we have is a BMW trying to be a Harley Davidson and a Harley Davidson trying to be a BMW. And obviously we would never compare an R18 to a Pan America. And yet they might be the two biggest rivals in the world of motorcycling right now. Not because they compare to each other, obviously, but because each one is reaching into the other one's cultural cookie jar. So the question is, which company comes out on top? Did Harley Davidson build a better adventure bike or did BMW build a better cruiser? To find out, let's start with the basics. One in three street bikes sold in the United States is a Harley Davidson. And because of that success, many companies have tried to replicate them. Most have failed, including BMW. The mistake the Bavarians made with the last effort, this R1200C launched in 1997, is that it's too clever. Too much engineering compromising all the style. It was BMW building a cruiser in its own way. Maybe for that reason, it was just too weird to be a cruiser that cruiser people wanted. This, on the other hand, is a cruiser that cruiser people want a Harley-Davidson Softail Slim. And, not coincidentally, this is the bike that BMW rolled into the design studio as a template for its next try. So, in order to understand what BMW is trying to emulate with the R18, we first need to understand this bike. There is no mistaking the Softail as anything other than a Harley-Davidson. It's broad and proud at the front, chest all puffed out, and slung low at the back to look like it's got no rear suspension. Even though it does, 3.4 inches. It's instantly recognizable because this basic shape has existed since before cars had seat belts, plucked right out of a Norman Rockwell painting of driveway Americana. When you ride it, as with most Harley Davidsons, you've got to appreciate something other than performance. The Softail Slim weighs 670 pounds with a full tank of gas, and even with a 1,753 cc engine, that's 107 cubic inches, it's not particularly fast. Then again, riding the Softail Slim isn't about speed or performance, it's about cruising. Of course, none of this cruising is very comfortable for more than a few miles. But come on, comfort is for communists. To ride a Softail is to stretch your legs out, slouch under your tailbone, and ignore the pain because that's freedom, baby. It's an acquired taste, but a damn successful one. Harley has sold hundreds of thousands of soft tails over the years, not to mention millions of other models the company has in its lineup. Harleys may not be as popular as they once were, but this type of bike and this category of riding is still the biggest slice of the street market in the good old US of A. Point being, if you're BMW, you want a piece of that pie. And you might be feeling pretty confident, actually. Lots of people laughed, after all, when BMW took on the superbikes from Italy and Japan. Well, that worked out pretty well. Plus, Harley makes big twin-cylinder engines right in BMW's wheelhouse. 
The first time you see the R-18, it is nothing if not striking. The paint is a gorgeous liquid black. There are classic BMW pinstripes and little details like the exposed drive shaft are as much art as engineering. When you first set off on the R18, it feels like it's doing a darn good impression of a Harley Davidson. It shakes, it rumbles, it reflects all sorts of light. Plus, the fueling is nice and smooth. And there's loads of torque on tap. And all that adds up to an attitude that, you guessed it, is good for cruising. The problem with the R18 is that as a motorcycle overall, it's just bad. The brakes feel worse than a soft tail, even though the R18 has an extra disc up front. The suspension is not as good as a soft tail, even though the R18 has more travel. It's less comfortable than a soft tail, even though the R18 is bigger. And if you thought the Harley's cornering was limited, try dragging the R18's foot pegs any time you leave a gas station, a parking lot, or a stop sign. When you put the two of them next to each other, you start to see the problem. Almost everything about the R18 is just huge. It's, it's eight feet long, literally, and it weighs 789 pounds, which is 120 pounds more than Senor Softtail here, which despite the suggestion of slimness is already pretty damn heavy. You could say that part of the problem is that cruisers are an American invention, but how did BMW get outdone by Harley brakes, by Harley suspension, by Harley cornering clearance? There's no excuse for the bad engineering. It's hogwash. And that brings us to the Pan America. Evidently, Harley was feeling so cocky about its engineering chops that it decided to build a bike to take on the adventure touring segment. Impressive. Yeah. But the problem is, BMW invented the ADV category, and the Bavarians have been refining this entire concept for nearly half a century. When the Germans crossbred a touring bike and a dirt bike in 1980, the result was a bizarre new kind of motorcycle one that could go anywhere and do anything. And now, 40 years later, BMW's Ugly Duckling has grown into a golden goose. On a scale of one to versatile, the R1250 GS is a 10 out of 10. You wanna ride to the top of Alaska? GS would be great for that. You wanna carve through sunny corners in the Austrian Alps? No problem. I don't know, maybe you just need to commute to work Monday through Friday and pick up groceries on the way home every once in a while. GS is going to be great for that as well. Basically, whatever the job is, the GS is probably the right tool. What makes the GS so good that it's been a top choice for decades? Maybe it's the telelever front end, with steering that's light and unaffected by brake dive or the paralever shaft drive, which is basically maintenance free and doesn't care about rain, sand, or mud. And of course, there's the boxer engine, a design with tractor-like torque and a low center of gravity. Today, these are BMW staples, and they're a far cry from the simple touring bike turned dirt bike that they first built 40 years ago. Those 40 years might actually be the most important ingredient because that's how long BMW has been perfecting its recipe for a go-anywhere, do-anything motorcycle. And the ADV category favors function over form because that's what gets you to the other side of the world, not style. So, 
if you're Harley Davidson and you're looking to wade into the ADV pond, that GS is the big fish you have to contend with. And frankly, you'd seem kind of screwed because even with 118 years of bike building experience as Harley Davidson, you've never had anything like an adventure bike in the lineup. Say hello to the 2021 Pan America. This isn't a street bike built back when all the streets were dirt. This isn't a dirt bike built by an Italian company that Harley owned. This is Harley's first ever attempt at a machine made for adventure touring as we know it today. It's a little bit surprising then to see that the Pan America's spec sheet just goes toe to toe with a bike like the GS. It's got heated grips, a huge TFT dash, linked brakes, cruise control, adjustable suspension, multiple ride modes. Then there are features that no other modern ADVs have, including the GS. Like suspension that automatically lowers as you come to a stop and hydraulic valve adjusters that eliminate the need for valve clearance checks ever. For a company that's leaned away from innovation for so long, Harley sure is embracing it now. Harley Davidson claims 150 horse powers and 94 foot pounds of torque from this new 1,252 cc V-twin engine. The motor company seems pretty proud of this engine, and as far as we can tell, they should be. It's light, it's compact, it's powerful. Despite all that, this is where it gets interesting. BMW doesn't make a lot of noise about the engine they put in the GS, but it is quite stout. They're claiming 135 horsepower and 105 foot-pounds of torque. So on paper anyway, these motors are very comparable, but this is what happens when you roll the throttle wide open in sixth gear at 60 miles an hour. You ready for a roll on? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Starting with a head start. Oh, oh no. Oh. Walking away. See ya. That's really something. Those torque numbers don't lie, I guess. Everyone makes a big deal about horsepower, but you know, it's torque that makes the world go round. Of these two machines, the Harley is a little bit slower, but it is still plenty fast. And the handling isn't quite as light and balanced as what we love about the GS, but it's not like the Pan Am handles poorly. The difference between the GS and the Pan Am is just refinement. The Pan Am's buttons don't have any tactile feel, and the Pan Am's dash is huge and bright, but for some reason, some of the font is ridiculously small. The GS isn't exactly perfect, but it has so many things figured out. It has more variable suspension modes and better fueling. The windshield is easier to adjust, and the aerodynamics are better. The transmission is smoother, and there's even an option for a quick shifter. The R1250 is heavier than it should be and more complicated and expensive than we'd like. But damn, it's an excellent motorcycle. So, after all of that that we just went through, <laughs> which company comes out on top? Did Harley Davidson build a better adventure bike or did BMW build a better cruiser? In this particular battle, it's gotta be Harley Davidson. And we will be the first to admit that uh, that soft tail there is not our cup of tea, but it's authentic and good. And that authenticity is the same reason that this new bike is good too. The Pan America isn't just some half-baked attempt at building an ADV. It's a genuine contender, and it's one that brings fresh ideas and new technology to a category that, for the past 40 years, has been owned by BMW. That being said, with all the technology, which technology would you choose? 
The technology has been around for 40 years. Sign me up for a GS. That, that technology? Yeah, absolutely. And you? I'd go with that technology. Yeah, of course. That's the technology, the German one. Certainly. Yeah.